it isn't just about the ad or like how you structured the landing page or like how you set up the audience. Like those are all the details that sure they affect performance of the ad itself. And the thing with that too is like everybody's doing the same thing. They're targeting the same people. They have the same landing right. page. They have the same offer. How's so it different, right? The only thing that can't be duplicated is you, your personality, your story, your philosophy. You know, your style, you know that yeah. kind of stuff. So you really got to put yourself out there more, and that's what people you know are lacking right now. Welcome to Barbell Business. I'm Mike Bledsoe here with Doug Larson and Marcus Kersey. And we're up here in Chino Hills, California. And uh, we're here at CrossFit High Road. And uh, thanks to Josh Baumgarten for allowing us to come in, hang out. We got an awesome training session in. And I uh, got to hang out with Jeff Sherman this morning. And Jeff is uh, a killer marketer. You have fitnessmarketer.com. That's how good of a marketer he is. He just <laughs> nailed the domain name. That's all he needed. And uh, when I think about Jeff, I think about somebody who builds uh, marketing systems that are airtight. If someone gets into your funnel, you have something for them every step of the way, and that's usually where people screw it up. So I'm really excited to talk to you today and find out how we can do the same thing for our businesses. Awesome, thanks yeah. for having me on the show. Yeah, also nowadays you can't just like put out content and, and not really be a face and not have any connection with your, with your prospects or your clients or your athletes before you actually like make an offer to them. You gotta have some connection where they're like, okay, this guy gets me, he, he's cool, he's in, he's in our space, et cetera. And there's many ways you could do that, because I'm, I'm interested to, to hear from you um, how you form a connection um, with your clients before you even meet them. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, like most people, they lead like what they consider boring lives and look at us as living exciting lives and want to live vicariously through us. So really just putting yourself out there, what you're eating, where you're going, what your workouts consist of, you know, where you go on vacation, what you do while you're on vacation, if you have kids, you know, how you train up their, you know, uh, healthy kids or whatever. So just putting yourself out there is the main thing and just being authentic is uh, how people are going to connect. You know, if you have a dog, you're talking about your dog, everybody that's watching that has a dog, there's a connection. You know, if you like Nikes, you're talking about your running shoes or whatever, everybody else that has Nikes, there's a connection. So yeah. every little thing is going to, you know, is going to connect them to you. And then over time, you know, they're going to know, like, and trust you enough to take you up on your offer. Cool. Yeah, and I, I want to dig in on um, the idea around, like, People think running an ad just straight to, not just even a home page, but even if it's just like ad to lead page and how it's really evolved beyond that. And it's about how the ad plays into the overall context of a, of a bigger marketing story and conversation that's happening. So really kind of unraveling how to make the ads more effective, intro offers more effective, all that good stuff. Yeah. yeah one of the biggest problems I see is that most people just run offer after offer after offer. And if you think about like email marketing, if all you did was send an offer to your email list, you're going to burn out your audience, right? So most local businesses are advertising to the same audience. And if they're just putting out straight ads to offer after offer, every time they go in the news feed, like, all right, it's another offer, okay, there's another offer. If you put scarcity in there, they're not going to believe it because next week they'll know it's going to be another offer. Every time they go on Facebook, they see an offer from you, and it's just going to get less and less effective doing it that way. So you got to put something in front of it. Um, so the simplest way to make it more powerful, make it better, is just to add an article lander that has to do with whatever the offer is, and then you're running ads to an article on your blog or whatever, and let's just say it's about like high intensity training and the afterburn effect or whatever. They go, they click on the ad, and they read the article, and then you hyperlink throughout the article, you know, different keywords, and if they click on that link, then it takes them to, you know, the squeeze page or the offer, and that not only do they, you know, they're going to feel like they found the offer. Like, oh wow, I'm not supposed to be here, and I found this offer. It wasn't that you like shoved it down their face on Facebook. You know, they they read the article. They're getting you know indoctrinated with why the offer is you know why they need it, and then they click on one of those links. And at the very bottom, if they make it through the entire article without clicking on the links, you just have a little button at the bottom that says you know learn more or next page. They click that and it goes right to you know right to the landing page. That's, you just did that one thing. Um, that's going to make you know. Um, your offer is that much stronger, and the life of the, art, of the ad that much longer. You know, we used to do like the first week of the month, most people have money then, because that's when they get paid, we would do straight to the ad. The second week, we go right to, you know, an opt-in, and then the third week, you know, they get paid again, we'd go right to, uh, right to the offer, and then we go to content the rest of the month, and we're pixeling them as, as well so that we can retarget them, so that way, you know, people are consuming your content, 
and then you're able to keep marketing to them that way. But yeah. then we've taken it one step further and just putting content in front of that whole entire process. Let, let's dig deeper into that. But first, I want to get into what used to work that's not working anymore. Yeah, so when I first I started, like, I had my gym going, and then I started Info Product, and I learned all the internet marketing you know, skills. And at the time, this was back by like 2009, uh, brick and mortar gyms weren't using the same tactics as info marketers were. So I, the yeah, product, we were still buying ads in like the local newspaper, yeah. magazine, shopping carts. It was like, it was like ah, I don't know. I guess I'll just put the business <laughs> in there. So um, the product that I created, you know, the info product that I created, I realized that's not what I wanted to do long term. So I kind of put that on the back burner. What was that? It was a soccer conditioning program. And um, it just wasn't something I saw like building a big company around and, and moving forward. But I learned a lot of skills in the process by creating the product, building it up, finding affiliates, launching it. And you know, I did make some money, but I took those skills and applied it to my offline business. And my offline business just kind of blew up. So you did, a, you did like a whole online training program and a business about that. And you, you got people in and no one ever stepped foot into a gym to do that. Yeah. And you started applying those same principles to getting people to actually walk in the gym. Exactly, yeah. And the first thing I did was just the affiliate model. Like online, you find people that have you know, the same customers that are non-competing, and um, you give them a percentage of the sales and have them you know, email out for you or whatever. So I just went to a local gymnastics center, and we did like a 14-day fat furnace. You know, Bedros Cooley created the program and wrote, it, wrote up everything. So I just took that program to them and was like, hey, you know, I have a, um, a way for you guys to raise money like for uniforms or for camps or new equipment. And um, all you have to do is send out these three emails, and I'll give you 100% of the money that comes in. And they send out the email. It was uh, $47 for 14 days, you know, 14 day fat furnace. Gave them 100%. But I had like almost 60 some people come in for that offer. So they made a ton of money, more than they would ever make, like, you know, pumping gas or doing like a car wash. Usually they're out there washing cars all day. They might make 300 bucks, you know. So they, they really, you know, made a fortune, um, you know, helping me out doing like an affiliate type launch. Then I had 14 days to win those people over and get them into my regular memberships. And that was one of the first things that I did. So would that, would that type of thing not work now? That, that would still work now. The thing that's not working as well now is that now everybody you know, is catching on to funnels you know, with click funnels and everything else. It's a, you know, it's a common, common word. Everybody, every business owner pretty much knows what a funnel is. And if you go on Facebook in any city, you're going to see offers for local businesses now throughout Facebook. So what's not working is continuously running an offer to the same audience over and over and over again. There's going to get blinders on there. And, even though you put scarcity into your copy, or like huge opportunity, we're looking for 15 beta testers, but they see that you know, week one, week three, week eight, week 15, you know, eventually they're like, all right, you know, this, is, this is always gonna be here, there's no rush, and it just goes stale. Now, over time, uh, especially in brick and mortar, you have a certain geography. Yeah, and the average is like 30 to 40,000 know, you know, ideal people. So I'm sure the there's a point where your list isn't growing that anymore. And your list is, I mean, when people get on your website, they're signing up to, Download an ebook, and they're on your emailing list, and you can hit them with emails and inviting them to come to the gym. You can then target them with Facebook ads and stuff like that, get them to come in. But if it's the same offer over time, yeah, it's going to stop working. Yeah. 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 So the main thing is just you know putting your content in front of the offers, getting them to know, like, and trust you. You know, putting your personality out there, connecting with them, and then when you do make the offer, they're they're in a position and ready, you know, to come in. They're just waiting for the offer, pretty much. So not. Not offering the same thing over and over again. That's so. That's, or even that's a, any, any, just, just not making any in. any offer. Like I, people change the offer up every month, pretty much. You know, okay. in our agency, people want to change the offer up, and we're like, instead of changing the offer up, why don't you change the content up in front of it? So that way, they're seeing different things. You know, because if they even if it's like one, you know, one month they go on Facebook and they see a 21 day rapid fat loss program, you know, for 21 dollars, and they don't buy, then the next month it's a 14 day fat furnace for 47 dollars, and next month it's like a six week transformation challenge, the next month it's a paleo rip challenge, and it's just offer after offer after offer, all the offers start to go stale because there's just that's all they see, and that's all you're known for. It's like, all right, what kind of deal are they going to throw at me this, you know, you know this week? Gotcha. This month? gotcha. So gotcha. How, how often is ideal then to switch up your offers? So um, as long as you have you know, new, fresh content coming in, you know, then the offer can pretty much, if it's a good offer, it can stay because only the people that are coming in through the offer and then you're upselling them to a regular program, mm. if they don't make it through the content, they're not going to see the offer anyway. So that one good offer can mm. last a long time. So you're, you're not yeah. wanting people to see the offer until they've experienced a certain amount of your, your free content, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we give them the opportunity to go through it quickly if they want. So like by putting the hyperlinks throughout the, you know, throughout the article or having it in, in the description of the video. And we always do like, a, if, you love, if you like this, you'll love this kind of clothes. So, it's, you know, so we'll do, give them some content. Like if, you like if you like this content, then you'll love this offer kind of thing. So yeah. we do kind of throw that in there just to give them, a, give them a chance. They don't feel like you're trying to sell them something. You just gave them like 20 minutes of good stuff that they can go you know, and do. Yeah. 
And you're the kind of guy that knows your numbers, so I'm, I'm curious, how long is the, what's the average on how long, how many times does someone need to see an offer or how long, how many things do they need to see of free content before they, they end up taking the offer? I mean, it, it's different for everybody. So if, if you're a very charismatic person and you put yourself out there and you have half the people love you and half the people you know, hate you, you can get them you know, pretty quickly. Um, if you're stale on camera and you're kind of boring, it could take a lot longer. So it really just depends on mm. your personality and the person. And it's all about engaging with the audience. And the more that you can engage with them and open up con you know, conversation and dialogue and, and talk to them on a personal you know, level, the faster you're gonna, that process is going to be. So it sounds like you're talking about video content. So is, is video content superseding written content? Yeah, so right now, like obviously, Facebook Live is still going really strong. And the reason that I think it is because it's, it's, they know it's not polished, right? They know it's raw. It's you just putting yourself out there. They get to know, they get to know you right off the bat, and, and uh, they, they can connect a lot faster that way. If you put out a polished video and they can tell it's edited and it's like perfect, you know, they don't trust it as much. Gotcha. So it's gotcha. better to make mistakes and mess up and, and stuff like that. So Facebook Live is a group. For brick and you're mortar saying that, that's what you want to do. If, you're not, if you have a brick and mortar fitness business and you're not doing Facebook Lives, like you're, you're really missing out. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Anything else that, that used to work that's just not working anymore? I mean, the main, the, the main thing is just sending, you know, people used to try to just send right to their, like we were talking about before, like right to their website with no like opt-in or no you know, freebie or free giveaway or no way to actually get them you know, on your email list. So just sending traffic to your website for, with information is just a total waste of money. So, so I, I can't believe people still do that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times you hear it, we hear it, people say, Oh, Facebook ads don't work, and they go, "Oh, what'd you do for it?" It's like, "Well, you know, I spent, you know, a hundred dollars, and I sent traffic to my website." And they're like, "You mean your <laughs> your, your homepage?" And they go to the homepage, and we find out the homepage doesn't give them an opportunity to capture any information about the prospect at all. Yeah. Well, well even going to like you know those who think like, "Well, I do, I did it better than most. I didn't send it to my homepage, Mike. I sent it to my free intro session, and they were just advertising a free intro session." It's like. That's, there's nothing compelling about that. Yeah. There's, the, everybody that's, has that, that offer ev or better. Everybody has that offer or better. So it's, it's how is it woven into a story, yeah. right? And it's like, how are you, like what's the bigger story? The ad is really just the, the kind of like final push or initial push into a bigger story. And that's where I think most people drop the balls. They're like, well, I ran ads for a week or two and I only got, you know, I got a bunch of shitty leads or I got no leads. And it's like, look, you, you have to like lead into this. If you're gonna launch something, like so let's say you're gonna say, I'm gonna launch this new transformation challenge and you're gonna have a six week program. We usually say we want a 90 day ramp up of like your organic content from Facebook Lives to blog content so that you can start really specifically like tailoring and kind of like we were talking about before the show, like kind of pre-launching the launch to like start priming your audience around a certain topic. Like if you're gonna launch that, let's say, let's say it's a nutrition program that you wanna sell. It's like before that, start talking about like questions that you have and like, you know, I've been getting this a lot and like you start priming it and start getting the whole thing, the whole story going and you, and I'll have you just say it yourself, but like, what was it about the, um, you were saying like agitate the problem, but like prior yeah, through so, the content, right? So no matter what audience you have, there's a certain percentage that aren't even aware that there's a problem to begin with. So you have to talk to them. If you skip that, then you're already losing a certain percentage of your audience. There's another percentage of any audience that's aware of a problem, but they don't know what a solution is. So then you have to let them know that, you know, here's the problem, but this, there is a solution, but they don't know about your solution. And then there's a certain percentage that knows there's a problem. They know of solutions, but they don't know about your solution and why it's better. So you have to be able to reach all three of those in order to make it the most effective. And you can do that through, you know, a video series where the first one you're just agitating and getting them aware of what the issue is, what the problem is, and then retarget to, you know, what the problem is, what the various solutions are, you know, pros and cons, and then to your solution why it's, you know, why it's better. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you, could, you could take them through that through retargeting using pixels and stuff. So they have to watch the first video to see the second one and they have to watch the second one to see the third one. Yeah, I, I think the, the lesson here is that it, it isn't just about the ad or like how you structured the landing page or like how you set up the audience. Like those are all the details that, sure, they affect performance of the ad itself. And the thing with that too is like everybody's doing the same thing. They're targeting the same people. They have the same landing right. page. They have the same offer. How's so it different, right? The only thing that can't be duplicated is you, your personality, your story, your philosophy, you know, the, style, you know that yeah. kind of stuff. So you really got to put yourself out there more and that's what people you know, are lacking right now. Yeah, and it's, it's an exercise, a little bit of patience too. People think it's like, well, I'm going to go from having absolutely no marketing presence whatsoever to being like marketing rock star overnight. And it's like, 
it's like building strength. You're not gonna go from a, a, a shitty 135 pound back squat to an awesome 400 pound back squat in a month of doing some squat cycles. It's like, dude, there's gonna be a layering process. We're gonna do some accessory work. We're gonna realize there's an issue here. We're gonna fix something. It's like, we have to build up to it. And to really get a healthy marketing system in place, it's a matter of, of building that up over time. It's like, get your, your organic strategy in place. Then it's like, okay, now what are we gonna push and when and how are we gonna build up to that? And let's build all those assets. Then let's create the ad structure. and like taking the whole thing into consideration so that when you do spend the money on the ad, it isn't just like, I spent money on an ad and it didn't work. It's like, we primed and prepped and groomed this whole audience and, and created an experience to get them to this point to where now it makes sense. And now you're, you can be way more sniper-like with your, with your advertisement rather than just kind of you know, thinking you're just gonna throw something out and it's gonna work. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the first things people do now is when they see your ad in the newsfeed, they click on your fan page. And if you have 100 likes or 45 likes, they're gonna think that you're brand new or you're not irrelevant, so they're just gonna, you know, they're probably not gonna trust you. There's gonna be a little bit of disconnect there. Then they're gonna look at your content. If the last time you posted was like six months ago, they're like, Are these guys even open still? You know, so the, the, you already lost them before they even got to your ad. If they go to your fan page and they see you have a few thousand, you know, a few thousand likes, some really good content or some great recipes that they wanna go try and they get excited about it, they see a success story on there, like, wow, I could really see myself in that person. And now they're gonna go back to the ad, click on it, and, and take you up on the offer. So just by managing your fans page properly, it will put you ahead of half the people out there that are, that are doing Facebook marketing. Yeah. yeah, and I think a lot of people here, they have to create content and they think like, I gotta like do this big thing, I gotta write, the, I gotta, like, write articles and, and blog posts and make all these videos and like, it's just like, I already have a gym to run and now I gotta do this whole other new job or take on this new role that's like really comprehensive and can go as deep as you want to. We do a couple shows a week as part of our content and it's a, it's a big ordeal, of course. Uh, you don't have to go that deep. Like if you have a fan page, like you can just link to one of our shows and say, hey, the show is really cool, go check it out. And like yeah. that's posting content in, in, a, in a Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But sure. it could be as simple yeah. as that, where it's two yeah, sentences and, and a link is, to something. You know, oh, you're, you're being silly <laughs> if you're not just automating barbell shrug feed into your, yeah. into your <laughs> fan page. Lock it up, Come guys. on now. <laughs> but, you know, but seriously, like if, if they curate great content, they're going to give credit to the person that curated Like I found this on this site, even though it's from you guys, they found it on their fan page. They're going to give the credit to, you know, to that gym for finding, you know, a cool way to do you know, double unders or muscle up or whatever it is yeah. that everybody's trying to do. And if they share it, and it's, it's more shareable, so they share that content and the um, fan page owner is gonna get the credit for, for putting it on there. So. Totally. Yeah, like Tim Ferriss does his, his five bullet Friday where like he just sends out an email once a week that's like, here's five little articles that, that I saw this week that I thought were really cool and I just wanted to share them with you. Yep. It's a consistent, systematic, weekly thing that he sends out. None of it's his content. He just happens to consume a lot of cool free resources and just is passing them on to his audience. Yep. And they probably really appreciate it. Yeah. So it's easy. Yeah, so we're cut. we just covered what doesn't work, got into content marketing a little bit. And let's take a break real quick. When we come back, I want to talk about uh, how to build a marketing system so when we do run ads, we know exactly what's going to happen with those people. Cool. Before I started with my barbell business coach, I was all over the place. I uh, didn't really have a plan for the gym. I didn't know what I was gonna be doing 30 days, three months, six months, a year out. Um, I was just so busy with the ins and outs and the coaching and the programming and the marketing and planning events and doing all of this stuff that I didn't really know where we were going as a gym. And as a result, uh, the gym kind of just went in circles. I had you know, between 85 and 105 members just bouncing back and forth and back and forth. You know, people were coming in, the people were going out, kind of missing something. Since starting with uh, the coaching program, when we first started, it really made me dive into what I wanted out of the gym, not just today or tomorrow, but for the future. They had us answer a lot of tough questions that really made you think about what you wanted and where you were going. But once we got the answers to these tough questions, it was very easy to make this plan for this month, this quarter, this year, to help us get where we wanted to go, to implement the programs, to hire the right people, to plan the right events. And really, I would say it's totally changed the landscape of my business over the last year and a few months. And we're back with Jeff Sherman. On the first half, we covered content marketing. We talked about what used to work that isn't working anymore. And now we want to get into how to connect with prospects. And uh, so, so what is it? How do you connect with somebody before they even show up to the, the gym? 
Well, nowadays we're so connected that it actually makes us less you know, connected as far as like interacting with one-on-one, -on -one, you know, with human beings. You know, we have autoresponders, there's bots, there's all that kind of stuff. Um, so one of the things that's working really well right now is just Facebook Messenger ads. And, um, you know, there's an app called ManyChat. It's like 10 bucks a month. And it allows you to uh, set up a regular ad on Facebook that's connected to your Messenger. So that you could use like a keyword. One way you could use it is if you wanted to deliver like a, some kind of free PDF on mobility or something like that, um, you could use the, uh, like a keyword mobility. So they actually just message, they hit the button, send, it opens up the messenger and they just type in mobility. ManyChat will send them the PDF and then you can have autoresponders set up saying, hey, just want to see if you're able to download the, you know, our PDF on mobility, if you have any questions. You know, number three people usually have trouble with whatever, let me know if you have any questions about that. Then, and then if they respond, then it opens up conversation. So you can do it that way. You can also like, give them some content and then you can make them an offer. And you can say, like, if you're interested, you know, you know, put I'm in in the, con in the comment section below. And when they type I'm in, that triggers the many chat response and it'll send them an automated you know, uh, message that will open up, you know, um, say, hey, you know, I got this program coming up. If you want some more information about it, just, you know, um, and you're interested, just type in I'm in in the comment section and I'll send you a message. They type in I'm in, um, you get a whole comment thread of I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. ManyChat automatically sends them whatever you, you know, pre-populated, you know, an autoresponder, which will open up dialogue one-on-one, -on -one, and then they message you back, and then, you know, after you answer a couple of their questions, you invite them in for whatever your offer is, whether it's a free week trial or a free, you know, body fat testing or, you know, whatever, or whatever it is. It sounds like something, I mean, it, it's new. Uh, I've been noticing that this is a technology that's existed for uh, several months now, yeah, which means that about six or nine months. Yeah, the adoption is still really low, but it is going to get to a point where the adoption is so high that exactly you know Facebook Facebook can do whatever they want. You know, it's not it's not email. And yeah. The other so thing, I mean, it's mainly just jump on it now. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, jump on it now in order for it to be effective. But the principle behind just opening up conversation with another human being will never go away. Like that's what people are longing for now. I mean, we're so connected that we're not. You know, right now the tool is the Facebook. I mean, chat, but, chat bot, but you know. I mean, what you're teaching is evergreen. It's something yeah. that that'll always work if you're always using the tool that people want to connect with in an authentic way. Yeah, I mean, and besides that, like if you when you send out an email, what are your open rates typically? Two. <laughs> no, I don't know. 12, 18 percent at, at the most. Yeah, I and, think 18 percent um, is Facebook Messenger, standard. Ours like does 98 in the 20s. Yeah, with Facebook Messenger. And, How um, much? 98%. Yeah, I mean, so, so. I think the industry standard is 18. Like that, yeah. so they can't that have that little red really bubble. High, it's yeah. like you're looking at it, you're like, someone's <laughs> trying to tell me something. That's what we you do, but that's not industry standard. No, okay. That's yeah. what we do, but that's not standard. No, it's like 5%. It's gotcha. Not even close. Gotcha. Yeah. And another thing that's working well are just lead ads, too. 98%. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And within a few minutes, too. Like, they doesn't let, it doesn't take long for them to open it. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, yeah. a year ago we were talking, a year, year and a half ago we were talking about texting. Now we're talking about the Facebook Messenger. Yeah. So it's just going to keep evolving. Yeah, eventually the message will be the you know, same as your inbox. But, uh, right now it's a little more personal and mm -hmm. just like texting. So you got to be careful with it that you're not, over, that you're not abusing the, the technology because people get pissed really quick. I, I feel yeah. like for me, I, the way I use Messenger is it's, it's like the bridge between email and texting. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. not, they're not really, the person's not quite sending me a text and it's not, it's not as formal as an email. It's that in-between place. Yeah. Yeah, so what's the most effective way to send somebody a message? Like, just like we said, you can't write them a long email, and it can't look like marketing. If, if I get a text message that looks anything like marketing, I'm just like, God, fucking get away from me. Like, Skip I'm, I'm phone in the ocean. I will read it. It'll definitely get opened, like the 98% open rate. Like, that's definitely happening. Yeah. Like, more than likely, I will open it. But when I get there, like, I'm going to be hitting the back button. Well, the thing Instantly. is that you're actually initiating mm -hmm. the conversation because I talked yeah. about whatever it is I talked about that I want to give you. Yeah. If you're interested, just say, say, mm -hmm. say I'm in and I'll send you a message. So by you typing mm -hmm. in I'm in, then, I, then you get a, person, a you know, private message from me with whatever I promised to give you. So right. that, you, that you said you were interested in. And then I'm just checking up with you like, hey, how was that thing that I gave you? Do you have any questions about it? Mm -hmm. Trying to get them to you know, respond back. And once yeah. I respond back, then you got the conversation going. Then you just sell them like you, know, like you would any other time. And that's different than an opt-in, because on an opt-in, you're on a homepage, you're on a, uh, you're on a website somewhere, and you're putting your email and in, you're and you're waiting patches. for something to hit your mailbox. Yeah. So in this, you're actually getting into your messenger. You're, you're yeah. messaging yeah, yes, you. In the, it's, in a, the messenger. it's a different thing. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So you get somebody into the funnel, and how do you get them into an airtight system? Because that's what's happening. A lot of people are getting People are getting, submitting the, even their email address or their messaging on Facebook Messenger or whatever it is. They're getting, they're connecting with you in some way. And then what I notice is that's where people drop the ball. Mm -hmm. 
Well, let's just back up and just get like a, you know, an overview of the entire life cycle of, a, of the client. And if you don't have that down, then no matter what tactics you use, they're not going to be that effective. So you always start with awareness, which we already covered in detail in the first half of the show. If you don't have, if you're not doing anything to bring awareness, uh, you know, to you and your business and what, you know, problems that you solve, you might as well not even, you know, put much effort to everything else because it's not going to work that great. And after that, once you bring awareness, then you want to give them something, you know, for free. So we want them to subscribe, so getting them to opt in. And then once they're on your email list, you know, from there, you know, you can market to them forever. You know, they're, they're yours until they, until they unsubscribe. So you want to indo you know, indoctrinate them by telling your story, who you are, what your mission is, show some, show some success stories, you know, throughout there, and send them through an indoctrination series to get them to know, like, and trust you. And then they're getting your weekly content, whether it's recipes or tips on certain movements or, or whatnot. And eventually, when you, when you do do a launch to your email list, they're, they're in, a, you know, in a position to buy. And then once they're on your list and you have an offer getting ready to come up, rather than just like hitting them with the offer with no heads up, you want to do like, like what we were talking about and get them excited. So then you start agitating what the problem is and then say that, hey, but I came up with this, you know, this new program that you know, I want to test out and see if it'll solve this thing and I'm looking for like 15 people or whatever. You build that scarcity into it and you're going to fill that up every you know, I'm working every for guinea time. pigs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who wants in? Everybody wants oh. to be the first, right? Oh. <laughs> and a lot of people, that, when they think about marketing, they think about like, how do I take someone that I've never met before, never heard of me before, and, and I turn them into a customer. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of stops there. It's like, I, I got them. Okay, start over with new people. Yeah, like, no. once someone's a customer, like, a lot of these same processes still continue to move on. Like, what yeah. do you do with someone after they've already purchased how do you continue to market to that person and keep the engagement? Yeah, so when, so, when they, so when they finally join your program, they join for a reason, they want to get results, right? So you have to lead them to that result that they're there in the first place. If they're not you know, getting closer to that result, it's only a matter of time before they leave. They're not going to refer their friends or family if they're not getting the results. You know, like if your friend or if your client goes out with their friends to, you know, to dinner and their friends lost like 20 pounds or they hit a new PR or whatever and they're saying well, everything they did and you, your client didn't, guess what? Your client's probably going to quit and go to their friend's, their friend's gym. So you want your client to be the one to really just focusing on what, why they're there and then helping them get there. Um, by all means, so like if they need supplements, then you need to give them the right supplements and sell them the right supplements, which you get, you know, paid for as well. If there's other programs, other things that you can sell them, you can send them, you know, and um, not only make more money, but also, but get them more results, get them better results. And then once they become a success story, and and then you know your retention is going to go through the roof, referrals are going to come in, and they'll end up being a promoter of your business. And that's what you want. Is you want a gym full of promoters, people that whenever they go out, if the, the word CrossFit comes up, you know, they, they they start talking about you, mm. you know. You guys map out some type of like a client life cycle. Like here's like from you know negative three months until they're a customer, and then here's from when they're first a customer to like the next year, two years, three years, where there there's always a the next stage to go to. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we we mark out like awareness. What are we doing, and what you should be doing, you know, as far as your videos and your content, and just building awareness around your story and your brand. And then there's you know the subscription part where you want to get them on many channels as possible, from email to pixeling them to you know your messenger list, because you can actually build a many chat list of, of messenger. You know, so as people um, when they message you, they're actually on that list, and you can send a broadcast to everybody that ever messaged you. You know, so you want to build that list up. Um, so you want to build up the subscription base across as many channels as possible. So that way, when you put your message out there, some people don't check their email, but they're on Facebook all the time, or they check their messenger all the time, or their text message, or whatever, whatever channel it is. So you want to get as many people on as many channels as possible. Like if you have a 10,000 person email list, but only 2,000 fans, there's something wrong there. You should be sending emails saying, hey, just put this video on my fan page, go check it out. And you're sending them, driving them there. So you want to get them on, on all, you know, all, all the different channels. And I imagine that offers a lot more stability than someone that just has a really good Facebook fan page. You've got 100,000 people on your Facebook fan page, you've got no Instagram, you've got no email list, et cetera. If Facebook takes a shit, like you are, <laughs> you're pretty yeah. much fucked. So you've got you to have your email list, you've got to have multiple other channels. That way, if anything changes, the market changes, or just for any reason you need to make a shift, you have the option to do so. For sure, I mean, that and you know, people, you know, most people favor one channel over another, and that's what they're going to be on more, more frequently and more often. So. If you have 10,000 people on your email, the same 2,000 people are probably opening it on a regular basis. When you're sending out your Facebook you know, messages, you know, well, 98% open, so there's only 2% aren't going to see it, so you really should build that up right now. But um, same thing, like post something on Instagram, it's probably the same you know, people that are seeing the Instagram message over and over, same as the Facebook post. So um, by putting it across all different channels, you're reaching the biggest percentage of your audience and you have the best chances at, at success. Mm -hmm. So when you're crafting advertisements and market campaigns and funnels and whatnot, like you're not starting from just a blank canvas where you're like, what should I do? Like, and you have no mental model of how it's going to look. Like, what are, what are the templates and models that, that you use where you don't have to come up with something from scratch every single time? As far as content goes? 
Yeah, as far as, as far as marketing funnels and or content, just in, any of your best templates would be really helpful. I mean, content, everybody, you know, they're always they had a lack of ideas and they're always like, well, what, what do I need to do? What do I need, you know? I'm like, well, you do stuff all day long. You talk, you have conversations with the clients every day, right? Like, yeah. Okay, so then all I have to do is that whatever a client asks you, they had a problem, just go in the video like, hey, earlier today I was talking with a client and they had this problem. This is what I told them. You know, or you could be like a week ago, you could, that way you can tell them what the results were. And I told them to do this, and a week later this is, what, this is how they are. You know, so that's easy mm -hmm. content right there. If you're talking to clients every day, then every day you have content. You know, every day you're probably doing a workout, so there's content there. Every day you're eating, you have content. Mm -hmm. um, every day you're either you know, doing something active with your kids or your family or your dog. Um, you're going on hikes, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. You're, doing, you're training for a kind of obstacle course run. I mean, whatever you're doing, you know, it's, an, it's the new reality TV. You know, people want to live vicariously through you, so just keep putting yourself out there and just always have your camera on as much as possible. If you have to hire somebody to follow you around with the camera on, do it. You know, that, that's where the content is. It's just in what you're already, you're already producing content, you're just not recording it. Yeah, so, it's, it's hard to connect with somebody if you don't feel like they're a real person. So what you're saying about like the mundane stuff, like you're at the lake with your dog and you're, you're out to eating lunch, like you can still post all that stuff and it's not fitness content specifically, but if you're like, oh wow, Jeff's a real person, like he seems like, like just like a bro, he's just like me. Like, okay, well like, I can learn from Jeff. So it doesn't have to be like super focused, like you're teaching like, you know, this, this huge course right. every time you make, you make some content, especially with things like, like uh, Instagram stories and whatnot now, where it's like, it's a 10 second video of, anything and the expectations are super low with mm -hmm. you know how how strong that content has to be you don't have to write anything you just record it upload it and you're done and people they yeah. want to see it yeah i mean if you're always doing fun stuff and people want that then they're going to come to you to figure out how to get it so if it looks like you're always doing cool stuff and having fun and um, and you know, and, and you're generally happy. That's that's what they're going to want, and they're going to come to you looking looking for that. I mean, you can spin like lessons off of it, but if you try to do that all the time, you're going to run out of lessons to teach. You know, cool. like one of the times, one of the posts I did is I used to go for a run with my dog in the morning before I before I go into work, and uh, every single morning. And then one morning, one day, one of my trainers didn't show up, so I had to run out the door. My dog's like waiting to go running. I'm just like right, right by him. Come back later, my shoes are all chewed up. So I use that as a lesson. Like that's what you when, get. When, when you choose workout partners, <laughs> you need somebody that's more committed than you, and that's going to hold you accountable. And you know, so I could spin it off of that. And then the next one was like, and now I need new running shoes. I was going to go with these or these. Which ones do you think I should go with? And then everybody's like, oh, go with these. No, you should go with these. And then a couple of days later, it's like I went with these. And then everybody that picked those, like, ah, you know, they're connected to you. So it's, <laughs> so it's, it's like you're good at this. You turned so, it into yeah. a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. So. Yeah. So I, I, I think we've covered a lot of ground in regards to like the big picture and, and I think there may be some people listening who may be intimidated with like how much can be done or like, because we could go down, we just went down like a dozen different <laughs> rabbit holes, yeah. right, from building systems to ads to funnels and all that sort of thing. Like if you could boil it down to like the next like one or two things that someone could start with, you know, someone who's maybe, they're, they're running a good gym, they've got a good program, they've got a good community going, but they're, they're, they're marketing slash advertising is kind of non-existent. Mm -hmm. Like maybe they post every now and again, but there's really no method to the madness. Like where would you say is the, the next place to start? Again, if they're not doing Facebook Lives, I would commit to doing one Facebook Live a day, no matter what the topic or the content is. Just get, start getting used to doing it. Even if you're bad at it, you have to be bad first before you can become good. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk fast, I mumble, but I always got on video anyway. And then I'm not good now, but I'm way better than I was, you know, six, seven years ago. And uh, so just keep putting out enough bad stuff till it gets good to start, you know, start there. The second is... Yeah, if you want to see bad stuff, just go to Barbell Shrugged episode one. <laughs> <laughs> like, I never tell people to start there. I'm like, oh, it's embarrassing. Yeah. But it's true. If you want to see, look at the show right now compared to episode one. Yeah. There's a, there's a, an evolution. There's a transformation that happened over time. So yeah. check it out. It's like the expression goes, if it's worth being bad at, or sorry, if it's worth being good at in the future, it's worth being bad at in the present. Mm -hmm. like, if it matters, then you, know, you can grind through the initial phases where you're not that great. Yeah, for sure. We're just kidding. We were always good at this shit. We were amazing. <laughs> and Natural. The second thing is really just knowing your customer, you know, your customer avatar, knowing who you want to go and uh, you know, bring in, whether it's uh, you know, you know, mid-level to high-level CrossFit athlete that's going to help you win local competitions, or if it's the, you know, the everyday you know, mom or dad that wants just to get back in shape, that used to be an athlete, wants to train like an athlete again. No, like that way your messaging is all, all around that. And then figure out what their number one either concern is or problem or fear is of starting a CrossFit program. Create a program around that that you can give them for free to take care of all those objections and you know get them you know get that into their hands to start the indoctrination process so they know like what your gym's about. Because CrossFit can be pretty intimidating for the average person. So if you're mm -hmm. going after the average you know fat loss client, it, you know you, you need you have some barriers that you need to that you need to overcome, and you can do that you know through a PDF or through a video series or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. 
Uh, Jeff, thanks for joining us today. Uh, one of the things I got out of this was that even if, you know, we need to be producing content likely daily. You know, when I look at, uh, I read an article about uh, Facebook, how often you should be posting, at least once a day. Maybe you don't have something every day, you can curate someone else's content and bring it in and make it that easy. Yeah, with, with our agency, we're posting three to five times a day for all of our clients. So it's, and that's just the stuff that, <sighs> that's just the stuff that we can do. You know, that, that's not the stuff that they have to do as far as, you know, their, their clients, them, that kind of stuff, but yeah. just the curated content. Uh, we find the most engaging, most shared stuff on the internet or on Facebook and post that for them three to five times a day, and then they should be doing at least once a day something personal. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I like hearing the numbers like that. A lot of people don't know how much content to do. They realize content's really important. They realize, like, you know, as the expression goes, content is king and whatnot. If you're consistent with content, that, that builds all of your potential to do whatever you want in the future, but it starts with building consistent content. So having you know, three to five aggregated pieces of content, uh, like we talked about earlier, and then uh, like one Facebook Live a day, like you suggested, like just having those numbers to start with are, are really valuable. Yeah, and going to places like BuzzSumo, you, you can find the most shared content on any topic. You just type in your keywords. It'll show you all the stats on a certain article or a certain mm -hmm. infographic, and mm -hmm. that way you know what's going to be shared and people are going to like it before you even put it on there. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. And uh, taking, the, taking advantage of this opportunity with the, the, the Facebook Messenger, blah, 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 the Facebook <laughs> messaging strategy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and weaving that into the front end, I think, is a huge opportunity for any of you guys who are trying to get more engagement. Like, many chat's a really good tool. There's a, there's a couple others Just out there. Now, yeah. It is crazy how much like horsepower you're getting for 10 bucks a month or like oh, yeah, for sure. you, there's nothing else you're going to spend that little on and get that kind of an open rate out of. Yep. Um, so take advantage of that. I Especially think that's, now before everybody jumps on that's it exactly it. it so. Adopt it quickly <laughs> because, <laughs> because this, is a, this is a great way to engage with people in a way that they're not familiar with. So it's new, it's novel. Um, so you're going to get a lot of engagement through it and then you can plug them into probably a lot of the other things you already have going, right? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, even within ManyChat, you, you can create unlimited autoresponder series to keep them engaged, keep following up with them, and, um, and not seem like it's a bot, like it's more natural you know, conversation and following up with them. Yep. I mean, you can create bots, which I don't recommend doing, because people know right off the bat they're having a conversation with a human, or they get like some weird answer back, because mm -hmm. you know, some sure. keyword triggered it, you know? If you're going to use a bot, let them know, like, hey, can you stump my bot, or can you fool my bot? And people are like, keep asking like, crazy stuff and see, see what kind of response they get. They can make it fun. If you're going to do it, do something like that. <laughs> I like that, yeah. <laughs> Stop my bot. <laughs> so, where, uh, where can people find more about you, Jeff? Either techsweat.com is the main, main site and has all my different businesses. What is that? On there. Techsweat, T-E-C-H, sweat.com. Cool, cool. Yep. Awesome. Anything Thanks else? A lot. I, think that, I think that's good. Awesome. Do you guys have anything else for me? Yeah, man. Yeah, no, awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks, yeah, appreciate it, bro. Thanks, man. Cool. Yeah.